Cacho, 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 cayo, cayo, cacho, uyo me ole usanko, uyo, uyo me ya, uyo me ya, oh, uyo, uyo me ya le usanko, uyo, uyo me ya, uyo me ya, oh, uyo. Yeah, everybody's born a winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If only you just believe. Uh, yeah. Close your eyes and come and see now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't you worry about a thing. Uh, Cause if you strive. Uh, you can get it if you want, if you work hard. You can be just what you want. If you strive hard, you can reach the mountain top. Cause nothing is too small and nothing is too big. Who your maya? Who your maya? Oh, who your, who your maya? What my eyes are seen Oh, who told you me to Yeah. Don't let them tell you you can't, cause they won't help you just so you know. Just keep on pushing, oh, oh. If it's it, i me all day. My day, my mom, to go down. If it's it, i me all day. My day, my mom, to go down. Oh, yeah, i me all day. Oh, yeah, i Oh, 
Please be upstanding for the procession. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please be upstanding to welcome the procession? Can we all rise to welcome the procession? Thank you. A hearty good afternoon to you all this wonderful day. Today, leading the procession is the BAR admin unit and the secretary, Senate ceremonials, Mrs. Basirat Sadiq. And in no particular order, we have in the procession OBSN, Professor Agose, Professor Smart Uchebu, Dr. Okechi Uchenna, Professor Mrs. Linda Okoye, Dr. Mark Mwaga. Emeritus Professor Alex Animalu, Professor Uboke Eze, Reverend Dr. Azubike Okeke, Dr. Esther Ekwe, Dr. Ijoma Mecca, Professor C.I. Udoye, Professor Cyril Dim, Dr. Eze Kwele E.P. Dr. George O. Ugu, Dr. Akbe James, Venerable Professor C. I. Okafor, Professor Bond Anyehe, Dr. M. C. Odiakosa, Dr. E. A. Akaji, Dr. Wan Kwa Kenneth, Dr. Neka Onyek Jaka, 
Dr. Ode Nema, Professor Florence Orabweze, Ambassador Professor Jones Wonsu, Dr. Duru Augustine N, Professor UC Ozumba, Professor OC N, Professor Basile, Associate Professor Ego Wokena, Dr. Chikodi Onyegiri, Venerable Professor S.O. E.K., Professor Cyril Dim, Dr. Apollos Ndokoba, Dr. George O. Ugu, Professor J.C. Eze, Professor C.A. Ozel, Professor B.C. Wangoma, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor F. O. Orabweze, Dr. Ume Uchena, Professor Ralph Anakwe, Professor Ifoma Okoe, Professor Ifoma Olase, Professor Silas Ufele, Professor Peter Achuku, Professor Eze Gui Hechu, Professor Onye Doom CC, Professor Joy Ebele, Professor NS Onwasigwe, Venerable Professor NS Onwasigwe, Professor Mba, Professor KK Agona, and Reverend Dr. Amobi. The national anthem, please. First stanza only. of Nigeria song. City of Nigeria, my alma meta. And rejoice for your savior. Where you and women to see for the and rejoice for the faithful. Hail the city, but of the shop, keep bright. City of Nigeria, my alma mater. Hail her and rejoice for her beauty. 
Of our glory, the pride of our land. Heaven rejoice for the times to And in arts and in other realms of learning, the University of Nigeria is all sublime. Can we please put our hands together for that? While at it, please permit me to welcome to the microphone Venerable Emeritus Professor Ernest Onwansigwe to please give us the opening prayers. May we all dress for prayers. Our gracious Father, we thank you for this day of coming together to celebrate your goodness and your faithfulness. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the blessings of bringing us together for joining mercies. Father, we pray that you descend in your majesty and abide with us. Direct us in all things, gracious Lord, and at the end, may we go with your heavenly benediction. For we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, sir. Um, someone whispered behind that we'll start paying Emeritus Professor Ernest Owasik before always doing the opening prayers. Do you agree? You agree? Oh, wow. It's all right. The chairman will look into that. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, principal officers of the University of Nigeria, my Lord Spiritual and Temporal, the Royal Highnesses that are here today, distinguished academics, members of the fourth estate of the realm, gentlemen of the press, lions and lionesses, lions and lionesses, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to this wonderful academic discourse. Again, we're here today for the 186th inaugural lecture of the inaugural lecture series of this great institution. As usual, permit me to kickstart this event with recognitions of members of the high table, dignitaries and guests who have traveled far and wide to grace this occasion. I'll start by recognizing the the Vice Chancellor, who, the Vice Chancellor in this gathering, who is being represented by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Inigo Campus. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Professor Daniel Wachiku. <laughs> I also want to recognize in our midst the chairman Senate Ceremonials, Professor B.C. Wangoma. Please put your hands together for him. And please permit me to recognize in no particular order the members of the high table, Dr. George O. Ugu, 
He is a senior lecturer and consultant. Please put your hands together for him, and I want to believe he's also a past inaugural lecturer. Professor J.C. Eze, Oracle, as it's being called. Please put your hands together for him, past inaugural lecturer. Professor G.A. Ozo, past inaugural lecturer. Professor F. O. Orabweze, my own beautiful, elegant mommy. Please put your hands together for her, a past inaugural lecturer. Professor Anne Ogbo, past inaugural lecturer. Are we appreciating these people at all? It's not easy. Dr. A. K. Ochoma. Please give us a wave. Can you please put your hands together for him if he's here? Dr. Ume Uchena. Professor Ralph Anikwe. Professor Ifoma Okoye. Please just keep appreciating them. Professor Ifoma Olase. Do I really have the right list here? Professor Silas Ufele, Professor Peter Achuku, Professor Hechu Ezegui, please put your hands together for them. And please just give us a wave if you're here. Let me be sure I have the right list. Professor Onye Dum Sisi. Okay, Professor Ezegui Hechu, please pardon me, is a Provost College of Medicine. Please put your hands together for him appropriately. Professor C.C. Onye Doom is a Deputy Provost College of Medicine. Please put your hands together for him too. Professor Joy Ebele, please put your hands together for her. If this is Ike Bazo, I'm sorry, I can't see your writing properly. Then our own Venerable Pro Emeritus Professor Ernest Onwasigwe, please put your hands together for him. Professor A.U. Mba, please put your hands together for him as well. Emeritus Professor Samuel Ohebulam, please put your hands together for him. He's a former DVC in Ugo campus. Put your hands together for him. Permit me to recognize the 186th, 86th inaugural lecturer. He's no other person than Professor Felix Unzube Chukuneke. Today, Professor Felix will be talking to us on oral and maxillofacial surgical practice in a development economy, the making of a surgeon. I appreciate him for that wonderful topic. I'd like to recognize the inaugural lecturer's family that are here present. Please, if you hear your name, just give us a wave, and our distinguished audience will put their hands together for you. Please, can you put your hands together for the daughter of the inaugural lecturer, Chiamaka Chikuneke? Please, Chiamaka, if you're here, give us a wave. Um, Mrs. Patience Ojuku, sister, please give us a wave. You're very welcome, ma'am. You're looking so elegant and beautiful. We have Ojuku Uchenna, the niece. Please, if you're here, give us a wave. Very welcome, ma'am. Thank you for being here. Ibeto, Ernest, nephew. Please give us a wave if you're here. Can we please appreciate them? Donatus Chukuneke, brother of the inaugural lecturer. Sir, please give us a wave wherever you are. And... Okay, I think the inaugural lecturer has a namesake, Ojuku Felix, nephew. Please give us a wave if you're here. All right, let's move on to recognizing the special guest in our midst. But even if we don't cover all of you here in this list, as the event proceeds, we interject it with recognition further. Please can we put our hands together for Professor Evans Ibarra. He's a bishop of Nike Diocese. The bishop of Nike Diocese. Oh, thank you, sir. You, you will probably give us a closing prayer. Thank you for coming. We appreciate your presence. Emeritus Professor Sam Ohebulam. 
uh, Memphis Hospital, Enugu. I think I've seen that man somewhere in the program before. Professor, you're welcome. We appreciate your presence. Please give us a wave. Let's see you. You're very welcome, sir. Sir Charles Olise Loka Obi, the Ichie of Ugwe Boba. I'm sorry, I don't know if I print Ugule Boba or so, but I, I stand corrected. You're welcome, sir. Plus, please give us a wave. Oh, I'm so sorry, Obi. You're welcome. We appreciate your presence, sir. And architect Peter Okoye C. Please put your hands together for him. It's from GSS Elori. Please put your hands together for him, sir. You're very welcome. We appreciate your presence. God bless you for gracing this occasion with your beautiful presence. All right. Professor Basile Ezanolwe, past inaugural lecturer. Professor Anthony N. Ikefuna, past inaugural lecturer. Professor Chinawa Josephath. Past inaugural lecturer. Please just put your hands together for them. Professor Val Ugu, past inaugural lecturer. Professor Gladys Ozo, past inaugural lecturer. Venerable Professor Sam E.K., past inaugural lecturer. We appreciate your presence. Um, Reverend Professor Uzo Ezugu, past inaugural lecturer. And Professor Kajetan Onyedum, past inaugural lecturer. Please put your hands together for them. I've also been reminded that we have Professor Smath Uchebu here. He is the former DVC Enugu campus. Please appreciate him. You're welcome, sir. All right. At this juncture, I would like to hand the microphone over to the chairman, Senate Ceremonials, Professor B.C. Wangoma, to commence further with this event. Please appreciate yourselves. It's not easy to be here. Appreciate yourselves, please. Thank you so very much, Joyce. Thank you uh, for those recognitions. I, I imagine a few people may have been left out, but we take care of that when the time, at the right time. So um, we're happy to be back, the Senior Ceremonials Committee of the University of Nigeria. We're so delighted to be back here at um, the Moot Court to host the 186th inaugural lecture of the University of um, Nigeria, barely one week after, barely two weeks after we left for the 185th. Um, and so on behalf of the committee, I welcome you very warmly, um, especially the distinguished guests who have come from out of town to uh, witness the um, inaugural lecture of the University of Nigeria. Uh, my first task is to invite um, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Enugu Campus, uh, the chairman of today's inaugural lecture, um, Professor Daniel Nwachiku, to um, declare, formally declared the inaugural lecture open with his opening remarks. The Vice Chancellor of the University of Nigeria, Professor Charles Arize Chuku Iwe. Members of the university administration here present, members of the governing council of the University of Nigeria here present, past inaugural lecturers, M Professor Emeritai here present, distinguished professors here present, Members of the Fourth Estate of the Realm, gentlemen of the press, my Lord Spiritual and Temporal, ladies and gentlemen, this is, we've gathered here today again, once again to listen to one of our own to deliver the 186th inaugural lecture of the University of Nigeria. Today's lecture promises to be a very exciting one. Very exciting indeed because this is the first inaugural lecture from the Faculty of Dentistry. <laughs> the
This inaugural lecture will be delivered by no other one than the dean himself, the dean of the faculty, Professor Felix Nzube Chukuneke. You can be rest assured that for the next one hour, we are going to be held spellbound. It's going to be an interesting lecture. This is the first time we are listening to a lecture on oral and maxillofacial surgery. The title of this lecture is Oral and Maxillofacial Surgical Practice in a Developing Economy, The Making of a Surgeon. Ladies and gentlemen, lions and lionesses, I welcome all of you to this great occasion the 186th inaugural lecture of the University of Nigeria. Professor Chukuneke will tell us why he became a professor, why University of Nigeria made him, found him worthy to be promoted to the rank of a professor. And all of us, by the end of the day, will, I promise you that it's going to be an interesting lecture. I want to appreciate all of you for making our time to come and listen to this lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor, I declare this inaugural lecture open. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, thank you so very much, Chairman. Uh, uh, we've got to the point where we begin to see things happen. And so to, uh, in keeping with our tradition, next is to introduce the inaugural lecturer. And uh, there's no better person to do that since he is the dean of the Faculty of Dentistry. It's my pleasure to invite, therefore, the Associate Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry, Reverend Dr. Azubike Okeke, to please come forward to read the citation and formally introduce the 186th inaugural lecturer of the University of Nigeria. Thank you. The Vice Chancellor of the Great University of Nigeria, Professor Charles A. Igwe, ably represented by the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Professor Dan Wachuku, the Provost College of Medicine, Professor, Reverend Professor H. Ezegui, members of the High Table, Council members and Principal Officers of the University, my Lords, spiritual and temporal, men and brethren, ladies and gentlemen. It is with delight and excitement and indeed great happiness that I have come to recite the citation of the 186th inaugural lecturer of my teacher, my friend, and my dean, a man whose name, Felix, also means happy. On the 19th day of October 1966, the family of Nze, Alex Odenatu, and Christiana, South Local Government Area of Anambra State, while living in Kaduna, Northern Nigeria, welcomed after three consecutive baby girls, their brand new and first baby boy, Professor Felix Nzube Chuku Chukuneke. It was therefore obvious that he was the Nzube of Chuku the Nzube of the great God. And so he was named. God from the beginning began to favor the young lad, narrowly surviving alongside his family, the pogrom that occurred in Northern Nigeria shortly after his birth. He has not only survived to become an academic giant tree with many taking shelter under his leaves, he has also continually remembered that God Almighty has been the one from whom promotions have come. Back in the East, like a wise man from the East, Nzube started his early academic career at the community primary school, Umuagali Oba, 
where in 1979, he got the best result in the common entrance examination throughout the entire old Anambra state. So you can imagine that if you schooled at about that period, you are looking at your scholar at that time and even in the present time. Nzube was consequently awarded Federal Government Exchange Program Scholarship, which saw him through Government Secondary School in Lori Kwara State. While in the school, Felix was not merely a star and an academic reference point for his peers, but a boy with exemplary character and discipline. At that very tender age, he was the secretary of the fellowship of Christian Students' Union in the entire Quara State. It is still on record till date in his school, and it hasn't been wiped away that Felix never took second position, but maintained the first position in the class throughout his stay in that secondary school. <laughs> the young smart kid had the intention of being a gynecologist, but for divine providence, for which we and his many patients are grateful. For he made a shift to become a maxillofacial surgeon. Consequently, he proceeded to the University of Nigeria College of Medicine to study dentistry. In 1991, despite all the enormous challenges, he passed his qualifying examinations and obtained the Bachelor of Dental Surgery degree. He then proceeded for his housemanship and followed it up by enrolling into the residency training program in the field of oral and maxillofacial surgery at the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital, Enugu. He became a fellow of the West African College of Surgeons in 2006 and was subsequently appointed a consultant oral and maxillofacial surgeon at the UNTH. At about the same time, in June 2006, he was also appointed a lecturer one in the university. Felix Nzube was promoted to the rank of a full professor in October 2015, and he became the first indigenous alumni professor in the faculty of dentistry of this great university of Nigeria. This academic giant did not stop at only dentistry and medicine. He also obtained several other appetizing laurels in the humanities and bioethics, including the Masters of Public Health, Doctor of Medicine, Advanced Diploma in Management, National Diploma in Human Science, Certificates in Bioethics from the John Hopkins University, U.S., Certificate in Bioethics, Kennedy Institute of Bioethics, Washington, D.C., UNESCO Ethics Teacher's Certificates, University of Namibia. Professor Chukuneke has held several positions of responsibility in the UNTH. The College of Medicine, including national and international community levels. He has been a two-time head of the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery from 2010 to 2012, and later from 2016 to 2018. He was the first dean of the Faculty of Dentistry, College of Medicine, who is of the UNN alumni extraction. Professor Felix Nzube Chukuneke was appointed the UNESCO Bioethics Chair of the College of Medicine, as well as the Pioneer Chair, College of Medicine Research Ethics Committee. He has served in various capacities as chairman and member to several universities and hospital committee, as well as international academic board member. In 2010, 
Professor Felix Chukunek led the Nigerian delegation to the second Pan-African Bioethics Congress, which held in Yaoundé, Cameroon, where the issues of clinical trials in Africa were extensively discussed. He was appointed board member, African Health Congress on Ethics for Ethics, Human Rights and Medical Law, Johannesburg, South Africa in 2014. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Felix Chukuneke, being a Fogati International Bioethics Scholar, was in 2008 awarded scholarship to study at the University of Pretoria, South Africa, and John Hopkins University, Baltimore University, United States of America. He obtained the MPH degree at the University of Pretoria and a postgraduate diploma in human science at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. He also has an advanced diploma in management and is a fellow of the Institute of Hospital Management of Nigeria. He obtained a certificate in international bioethics at the Kennedy Institute of Bioethics, Georgetown, Uni Georgetown University, Washington, D.C. A certificate in bioethics at John Hopkins University, USA, and UNESCO Bioethics Teachers Training Certificates at the University of Namibia, Windhoek, Namibia. He was awarded the Distinguished Medical Nobel International Award in 2009 and the Fellow Institute of Management Consultants of Nigeria. He is also a Fellow of the International College of Dentists and Fellow International College of Maxillofacial Surgeons. Ladies and gentlemen, According to the benefits of the Almighty God, permit me to say that Professor Nzube Felix Chukuneke has been the first, not just in being the first boy of his parents, but in many other things that are good. He is therefore the first University of Nigeria alumni professor in dentistry. He is the first indigenous trained professor of oral and maxillofacial surgery. He is the first alumni dean faculty of dentistry. The first chair, College of Medicine Research Ethics Committee. The first chair, founder, Southeast Oral Forum. He is also the first chair, Eastern Nigeria Research Ethics Forum. That's not all. He is the first chair, Zeta Z Independent Research Ethics Committee in Nigeria. He is also the first chair, UNESCO Bioethics Unit at the College of Medicine, UNN. And the first inaugural lecturer, as you heard the DVC say, of the great faculty of dentistry, UNN. Professor Felix Chukuneke has traveled near and narrow, far and wide, to all nooks and crannies of the world and presented papers, not only in the field of maxillofacial surgery, but in bioethics and public health in several countries across the world, including Arusha, Tanzania, 2009, Istanbul, Turkey, 2010, Santiago, Chile, in 2012, Boston MA in 2013, Singapore in 2010, San Diego, California, still in 2010, Miami, Florida in 2012, Windhoek, Namibia, 2012, Kassan, Botswana, 2011, Wellington, Australia, 2011, Nottingham, United Kingdom, 2011. Our inaugural lecturer has traveled to Barcelona, Spain in 2013, not to watch a football game, but to contribute from his wealth of knowledge 
to that community and the world at large. He has been to Johannesburg, South Africa in 2014, Hilton, Peter Marysburg, South Africa in 2018, Jerusalem in 2018, possibly walking on the same sands that Jesus did. He has also attended very many other workshops. As you may have already guessed, his research interests include oral oncology and maxillofacial reconstructive surgery, bioethics, and public health policy. With about 100 publications, that's actually being modest, and two contributions in a medical book and a book in health research ethics. Professor Chukuneke has won an innumerable number of grants. He was the recipient of the National Primary Health Care Research Grant by the National Primary Health Care Development Agency of Nigeria, 2009. Recipient of the Global Bridges Health Care Alliance for Tobacco, 2012. And several scholarship awards, such as Public Responsibility in Medicine and Research. And this was in 2010. International Scholarship Awards, San Diego, California, USA. Society for Nicotine Research Scholarship, Boston, USA, in 2013. He is also a recipient of the Global Forum in Bioethics and Research Scholarship Award in 2018. Stellenbosch Western Cape South University. Recipient of African Health Research Ethics Scholarship Grants for 2018. Professor Chukuneke also has a full scholarship award to attend. He had a full scholarship award to attend Global Bridges Conference in Cairo, Egypt in 2011. He is also presently the principal investigator, UNN Michigan State University collaboration on bioethics training and research. He is an editorial board member to several international, local, international and local journals and belongs to so many international and, locally, and local organizations involved in service to humanity. And these include being a board of trustee being a member of the Board of Trustee of the Nigeria Medical Association. He's also a member of the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria. Member, Public Responsibility in Medicine and Research. Member, International Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons. Member, International Society for Child and Adolescent Injury Prevention. Member, Society for Quality Assurance. Member, African Technology Policy Studies Network. Member, African Administrators in Health Research Ethics. Professor Felix Nzube Chuku Chukuneke is also the current Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry, UNN, where he has also been a father figure and a role model to many. Beyond academics, this rare academic gem has contributed and has been involved in community social corporate responsibility activities, receiving more than 40 awards. He has equally presented over 20 keynote lectures in all fields of study. Professor Chukuneke is also a philanthropist and has awarded scholarships to indigenous students. He is also a man with great regard for culture, therefore attracting multiple chieftaincy titles. No wonder you can see that a lot of traditional leaders, Igwe's and chiefs are all here. And this, his interest 
It matters of culture has earned him many chieftaincy titles, some of which include that he is the Waki Beyanoba, Anambra State. He is also the Ebe Kuedike Naamadim, Olo Ezago Enugu State. No wonder many, therefore, often choose to simply address him as he cheer. Professor Chukuneke is married and blessed with an only surviving daughter, Chiamaka. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome to the podium this erudite scholar with many feathers on his cap and a professor of oral and maxillofacial surgery, our own very professor, Felix Nzube Chuku Chukuneke. This is my story, this is my song, praising the Savior under the law. This is my story, this is my song. In the Savior under the Lord. Yes, this is my story. And uh, I thank God for making it possible for me to see today. Um, before I proceed, this inaugural lecture would have been done about uh, three or four years ago, but uh, because of the um, situation that happened, I wasn't able to do that. And uh, I thank God that today, I am standing here with you people for this inaugural. So I dedicate this, my inaugural lecture, to my late daughter, Chisom Enyinia Chukuneke, which today would have been her 20th birthday. But the cold hand of death didn't wait for this to materialize. So, she has been preparing, planning for this inaugural lecture as, as far back as 2019, for around April. But unfortunately, February, she took ill. So, that is why I dedicate today. And interestingly, today should be her 20th birthday. So you can imagine how happy she will be over there, rejoicing while celebrating her own birthday. And the dad is making, him, making her proud on earth. So I, uh, I plead your indulgence to just observe one minute silence for my late daughter.
May the soul of my late daughter, Chison Enyinia Chupuneke, keep resting and rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Arinze Chukigwe, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, other principal officers of the university, Provost College of Medicine, Provost College of Postgraduate Studies, President of UNN Alumni, all the dignitaries, the Igwes, the Ezes, lions and lionesses, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a preamble. While starting, I would like to let us know about who are the oral and mazofacial surgeons. What do they do? Which area in human medical endeavor do they come into play? Oral and mazofacial surgery, OMFS, that's usually known in short form, is an internationally recognized surgical specialty which evolved over the last 100 years from a group of dental practitioners who were treating patients with orofacial tumors and facial fractures in collaboration with plastic surgeons. They manage patients with diverse and complex problems within a well-defined craniofacial anatomical area. Apart from dental alveolar surgery, meanwhile, dental alveolar surgery, just for those who are not medically inclined, is just extraction. Apart from dental alveolar surgery and facial fractures, oral and mesofacial surgeons are expected to manage congenital craniofacial anomalies, including cleft lip and palate, all oral and facial trauma, oral and facial cancers with reconstruction, using local flaps and microvas uh, microvascular free tissue transfer and orofacial tumors with uh, place and autologous reconstruction. Well, other areas are management of salivary gland diseases, temporal mandibular joint disorders, and surgical management of complex prosthodontics problems. <clears throat> well, in Nigeria and other countries like USA, Canada, India, Brazil, Sweden, and Israel, it is domiciled in the dentistry primarily, but in UK, that means to be an oral mesofacial surgeon, you can do, you can just enter to do dentistry in Nigeria. But in UK, you have to do medicine and surgery before you then go into dentistry. Or you finish dentistry and go into medicine and surgery. But in here, because of our, the peculiarity of our program, it is done in such a way that while you are doing dentistry and you have uh, that um, you know, interest in becoming oral and mesofacial uh, 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 surgery. Then the exposure you have in medicine and surgery exam will enable you to go to dentistry, come out, do your residency, and become oral and mesofacial surgeon. But it is not like that in Nigeria, I mean in UK, where you have to be doubly qualified. Now, what are the scope of oral and mesofacial surgery? One, anesthesia, and they say especially local anesthesia. Dental alveolar surgery, which is extraction, tooth removal. Dental implants, for those whose teeth are gone and needed replacement, permanent replacement. Management of dentofacial deformities or infection. Surgical correction of mesofacial skeletal deformities. Orthognatic surgery. Cleft and craniofacial surgery, maxillofacial trauma, temporal mandibular joint, pathological conditions, reconstructive cosmetic surgery. That is why you can see why oral and maxillofacial surgeons work hand in hand with plastic surgeons, and even in some situation with neurosurgeon. Our revered uh, professor of neurosurgeon, Professor Helblam, is here. Thank you, sir. You understand what I'm saying very, very well. Now, uh, before we proceed, I would like us to just look, have a, a little look 
at some of the diseases that we handle in myofascial surgery. Because some people might be thinking myofascial surgery is new in our environment uh, because of the training, lack of training. So these are some of the, the cases we handle. So if you can see further, you see accident victims. Well, uh, I would say as I go on that most of the pictures you are going to see here might be very disturbing. But that, that the, the stark realities of what we are facing today. So there's no need to hide it. Some of us that are well do not know what those who are sick. And again, for the fact that this, some of the things you are seeing here could be avoided, it's very important that the public are made to know what goes around on this. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, may I express my gratitude for the privilege and honor to stand here today before the distinguished audience to share my experience as an academic and a clinician and also share a bit of my life journey to becoming an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. Today, the 24th of August, 2023, is particularly a very remarkable day for me. Being the day my late daughter, Chisome Nimiya Chukuneke, would have turned 20 years before the cold hands of death. It is also a remarkable day for the faculty of dentistry, not only as this is the first inaugural lecture, from the faculty, but also from the first indigenous trained professor of dentistry and oral and mesofacial surgery. I am therefore very grateful to God for making this day a reality. My thanks also go to Professor Chima Wanguma for the great job he's doing. To God be the glory. Well, I hope this lecture helps in giving an insight to the tortuous but very fulfilling journey of getting trained as a professor of oral and mesofacial surgery, and the challenges in practicing maxillofacial surgery in low-resource environments such as ours. Well, uh, I might just have to give a brief history of uh, dentistry. Uh, in 1983, a department of dentistry was created as part of the Department of Surgery under the Faculty of Medical Sciences and Dentistry. Dentist, the Department of Dentistry became the School of Dentistry while within the Faculty of Medicine. But eventually, in, in 1989, a tripartite agreement was entered into the College of Medical Sciences, the University of Nigeria Hospital, and Federal Ministry of Health, where Federal School of Dental Technology was uh, incorporated and being used. But unfortunately, because of that of uh, doctor's facilities, the school was closed. In 1992, then it resurfaced again. A new bat was uh, in, in place in 19, 19, uh, 2004. Then, the Department of Oral and Official Surgery were the first person who started um, this department was uh, Professor Wonko. Like I said, there has been a lot of uh, problems because of getting trained dental surgeons and mesofacial surgeons. So at a point, we were having a lot of issues getting staff, but as of today, a lot of things has changed. The historical journey of the Faculty of Dentistry from inception has transcended, transcended to a new phase of uniqueness, phase setting, mass reconstruction, and total transformation of our modus vivendi from lifelessness to dynamic ambulance. Now, the making of a surgeon. How did this start? Well, like I said earlier, or from my citation, I got scholarship to school at government secondary school in Lorin. Interestingly, some of my classmates and my senior, somebody like Akite Pito Koye, was my se uh, senior brother, in the university then. Then uh, Olatun Boss, who, who, is, uh, who is incidentally was sent by the alumni at Eloring to come over here, is there with, with us. 
Then my schoolmates, all of us, in fact, he himself from uh, Ako, and uh, the other person from Amuri, three of us got scholarship to Elorian. Moses Ofo, and he's here with us. Thank you very much. So, while in the school, you know, at Elorian, we were opportune to have a lot of things to read. That was as, as far back as the uh, uh, 1980s. We already had a lot of things to read. I was reading a, a journal, and I, I saw where somebody who had fracture all over his faces. There was reconstruction. I was wondering, how, what manage? Who are those involved in doing this? They say it's my official surgeon. Right there, I decided that I would be a my official surgeon. So, I made inquiry. And uh, I was told by uh, my, uh, my science teacher there, Mrs. Vagis from India. So, she told me about British... Uh, Better that you have to, after medicine and surgery, you have to go back to dentistry before you become a masterful surgeon. It was so hard in, in discouraging, but all the same, I was determined. So, but when I came back, I was told you just go straight to do uh, dentistry, and you now do residency and become a masterful surgeon. So, I decided to do so. Now, because I had had that knowledge that I have to do medicine, I put medicine in jam. But when I came back and they told me, well, I had to change to dentistry because I want to be my official surgeon. Uh, little did I know in those days that there are going to be problems because the information was not really handed over to me that accreditation was uh, lacking. Anyway, many schools that start, you know, used to have that issue. So now... That is why when I look at how far I've gone today, how I became what I am, so many people contributed to make me to be what I am today. Okay, thank you. So, and inaugural lecture, becoming a professor and giving you inaugural lecture is to let people know that you didn't just come down from heaven and become professor. Some people help you through life, mentorship, encouragement, influencers, even in certain cases, financial. Because if you don't have money, how can you, be a, how can you, you know, get your degree? So, and uh, I think that this is an opportunity for me to thank them in various ways they helped. Uh, in this way, as you can see on this table, you will see somebody called Professor AOE Animal. Professor Animalo, some of you might have been hearing the name Physics and Astronomy. Emeritus Professor of Physics. My maternal uncle, an Emeritus Professor of Physics and Astronomy, three times nominated for Nobel Prize in Physics, was that person. You know what it means. Well, when a black man is given that, you know, nomination, you know the society, the world which we are living. So he was the person that from my childhood discovered the real academic potential in me, following the Federal Government Exchange Program Scholarship Award for being the best student in common entrance exam in the Old Anambra State. So you can see that it's in the gene. Oh, yes, because as in life, I go, Molada, Tafifia, and no Konata. So he encouraged me to go into dentistry and become a masofficial surgeon as I had wanted. His belief then was that as there is a dart of such, as there is a dart of such specialty in our environment. And with increasing cranial myelofacial cases occurring, the society will one day definitely need people like me in that field. I could remember vividly in the heat of non-accreditation and the possible closure of the school, my mother and I didn't find it funny with him at a point because of the frustration. 
But he said to me, my boy, remember this. There are dentists, but there is the dentist. There are mysofacial surgeons, but there is the mysofacial surgeon. Today, I am glad that I did not disappoint you and your support. And upbringings were not wasted. More importantly, I am the mysofacial surgeon. May God keep you for us. Then the next person is Dr. Sam Madako. Sam Madako was the first person that exposed me and my colleagues to oral and mesofacial surgery lecture. As at the time, in the late 80s, <coughs> he was practicing mesofacial surgery, having studied under the tutelage of Professor A.O. Ejide, a renowned professor of oral and mesofacial surgery and the foundation dean of the School of Dentistry. Beginning. His method of teaching was so intriguing that we always look forward for his lecture anytime that we have lecture with him. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> the next person was Professor Chima Oji. He was the one who gave me, who gave my colleagues and me the rudiments and surgical principles of oral and mesofacial surgery. He was the first dean of faculty of dentistry and actually was very instrumental to our movement to University of Benin to complete our dental program when the future of dentistry in UNN was very bleak and uncertain. As the only oral and mesofacial surgeon then on ground, he steered the ship of the unit, always looking out for the good of the unit. He was always eager to teach us the fine art of surgery and encourage those willing to assist and observe occasionally perform the surgery without his physical presence. In so doing, he installed confidence in us. Obediently, I worked so closely with him, acquiring the skill and the confidence that have been of immense help to me in the field of mesofacial surgery today. Thank you, sir. Now, you see, I am an bioethicist, and I bioethicists tend to understand human principles human interaction, flourishing human relationship. Well, some people will say patriotism is not enough. One must not have grudge against another. This man, Professor Emmanuel Adekeye, was the man who actually, I might say, that his, my story of being professor in mesofacial surgery cannot be complete without mentioning him. When we were having problems, qualifying as dentists. We had to be going, to be taking qualifying exams, and they were bashing us up and down because we never had accreditation. When it was our turn to go there, some of the lecturers that were taking us exam said that no, that we are not going to go there. Despite the instance of uh, one professor, Dusan, that we must pay 4,000 naira each then in 1992, before we would be allowed to take exam, he stepped it down. You can imagine somebody paying 4,000 naira in 1992. You see, why I have to say this that it was very painful. We suffered a lot. But again, challenges might come. But defeat is optional. I refuse to be defeated. And today, I'm the mesofacial surgeon. So, Professor Dekeye, having discovered my academic potentials, took me like a son all through the period we were in Kaduna for the examination. We never paid that money again. This is a Yoruba man. And he told me, my boy, what, why are you, are you people getting money? Where do you get 4,000 to pay? Are you working? I said, how can we work when we are not qualified? He said, so your parents will go and suffer for this. No, go ahead and start. That was how we did the exam. May he keep resting in the Lord. There come Professor Johnioli, another uncle of mine. He was the chief medical director then when we finished the qualifying exam. The issue 
because the school has already been closed. This is how do we go ahead? He insisted that we must do residency. Myself, I'm Professor Lindo Koye. Sit down there. Professor Lindo Koye, stand up, let them see you. Yes. She herself, and uh, unfortunately, the late Dr. Mbokwere, three of us, not minding of losing it all, we decided to stay, to salvage our university. And today, to the glory of God, we have made it. And faculty of dentistry standing. <laughs> Professor Lee, thank you for what you have done for us. Then, the other person is uh, Dr. Felix Ugunze. He's late now. He's from my town. He brought me up like his son. And taught me the rudiment of surgery. Interesting, he was a German trained uh, surgeon. So, may he keep resting in, in, in the Lord. You see, good work will continue to transcend. That is why we try as much as possible to lay a good foundation. Because when you look at outside, those trees you see, people go there to stay under and take shade. We are not planted by themselves. They were planted by people. Let us always plant good trees for the betterment of the society. The other person is uh, Professor Martin Ayaj. He was supposed to be here today, but for some, you know, urgent need, he couldn't make it today again. Now, the time he might come back, might be late. So, he was the one who actually helped the faculty during the turbulent period of uh, qualification. And um, he was also concerned about my academic advancement. I never stopped at that, but nurtured and ensured that I became a professor, the first union produced in dentistry. Thank you, sir, for all you did for me. The venerable Professor Ernest Onwasigwe. There's no person in College of Medicine that will not know this man. This is a man whose kindness knows no bound. I don't need to say more about him, but all I can say, may God keep on blessing him and keep him for us. Then, another one of them, Professor Anthony Yumba, a jolly nice fellow, an easygoing man, always happy, ready to listen to you anywhere, anytime you come. He was the one who didn't take a blink. But when international community and NIH gave me scholarship to go to US, he, he didn't miss, I mean, waste, waste any time at all. And uh, the management, management gave me approval for study leave in South Africa and US. And today, I was among the people that brought in ethics in the Southeast. And today, the Southeast are doing well in field of ethics. Without which, I wouldn't have benefited. Because if he had said, no, you are not going to any study leave, there's no way I could have gone because I was just being employed newly. So thank you. And he has still remained a very close friend. Thank you, sir. Now, you can now see that uh, how I became what I am. Now, I became a surgeon because these people were there to assist, to help. There are numerous other people, many of my friends, that have contributed immensely to what I am. And I will keep on thanking and thanking you. For those I couldn't mention here, I see who they are high esteem for what you have done for me. <laughs> now, let us see practicing oral and mesofacial surgery in low resource environment, what the problem and the challenges are. The difficulties in surgical management of oral and mesofacial surgery diseases when they present late cannot be underestimated. In Nigeria, as is often the case with most developing countries, 
a vicious chain reaction of poverty, superstition, ignorance, poor health seeking behavior, and limited option of treatment result in patient default for late presentation. Chukuneke, the research I did, I conducted within the Southeast, find out that vicious chain reactions of superstition and all these things are because of low economy. When somebody don't have money, and you are suggesting something for him that needed money, he or she will look for alternative, and you can be sure the spiritual aspect is there. They can just go and look for the best alternative because they, they don't have money. They look for the only alternative they have. And why all these things as well is that when Nigeria became independent in 1960, she inherited healthcare system that was modeled after the system industrialized Western nation that colonized them. The white people were concerned about the diseases they faced there, not the one we are having here. So if, if there is measles that can affect them here, they are more concerned about it. So when Nigeria became independent, that was exactly what happened. Public health programs of international development agencies during this period were also largely targeted at eradicating specific diseases, such as smallpox, yours, malaria, with little or no focus on oral health care. And you know, by then, our mode of eating has not changed to this modernized way. So most people in those days were not having some of this dental problem that we have today. So each diseases eradication program operated autonomously with its own administration and budget. And very little integration of oral health care into the larger health system was done. The situation was in the 1970s during the war. And it will, it, it, you know, it, will interest, it will interest you to know that even in 1988, when Nigeria adopted primary health care program, you know, into oral health care, little was even done. No, no oral health care program until 2012. So you can imagine what is happening. Now, consequently, oral health care became very moribund and rudimentary, which was compounded by chain reactions of events. Lack of basic infrastructure for effective oral health care delivery at the grassroots level. The non-availability of training institutions, improper health-seeking behavior, poverty, ignorance, and superstitious belief. Culture, religion, and habit. Lack of basic infrastructure for effective oral health care delivery at the grassroots level. There are quite a lot of, you know, need to have facilities on ground. In my own uh, research, I did also in 2015, I found out that while reports across the globe have shown that incidence, severity, mo morbidity, and mortality of dental facial infections have declined dramatically over years in advanced countries, but the same is not with Nigeria. This dental facial infection is just common toothache, gingivitis, which can progress to some of these diseases you're going to be seeing here later, something that could be taken care of. Now, when you look at these cases, this thing did not just come just overnight. These things are just toothache, just toothaches. Because some people just say, ah, okoyeze. There's one, this thing they usually put, is it um, Agnes in one more so? They call it Agnes in one more. Just put it there, it will go. Alcohol and formalin mix together. Then when the thing will be acting on the tissue cells, you will not know. Some of them will eventually lead to cancer. If it doesn't progress to infection directly, which, can, which you can see this type of thing, it can later time develop in cancer. So that is why it's very, very important that oral health should be given priority in our environment. Because the thing is that these things are suffered by the people of the rural areas. So you look at non-availability of adequate specialist hospital and training institution. This has explained itself. We lack hospitals. We lack, uh, you know, people trained in these areas because we never gave this as priorities. So that is why you see some of these diseases 
occurring every day. One important thing again is improper health seeking behavior. You see, in Africa, health care is problematic. It's a complex one. Because people do not accept the model of health care delivery that is given to them. We Africans look at our disease with the natural connection to our natural and spiritual environment. So when you have a problem, you do not go to hospital first. You will have to go and for the preacher to pray for you, or you go to a herbalist, or you go to a native doctor, whichever way. Especially some cases that might not have an issue originate from the tooth. Like when you have amyloblastoma, somebody will call it a pimple. Or when they see the jaw swelling, they will say, ah uh ah. -uh. Okay, I say that now no me chime me fair and mafu. I may make me go here again. And trouble will start. So this is one of the problems we have. Even this is not exceptional to Africans, I mean to Nigeria. In Tanzania, some people believe that if you want to get malaria parasite in the blood, you will first of all go to a native doctor who will cast the veil, the witches will take to cover the blood so that you will not see the malaria parasite. So when you go to the witches, the witches will cast the veil, you can now go to do tests to know if the malaria parasite will be there. So you can just, you can just see how a just a cultural concept has created another issue. Then, then to facial infection and acute necrotizing facialities. In the nutshell, these things about the grammar is that when you have a hole in your tooth, bacteria keep eating the hole and enter the pulp. The pulp is where the blood supply, the nerves, everything goes in. So at a point, it becomes infected. The spread will go on. The spread will go from your tooth to the chest to the, uh, to the neck, just from the tooth. So our research find out that there is no way you can have acute necrotizing fasciitis without tooth infection, without dental decay. So that is why emphasis on oral health care become very, very important. So it has been shown that the most common reported etiological cause include dental caries, periodontal diseases, and pericoronitis. And of course, you know, when somebody has diabetes, hypertension, some other disease condition, treating, treating the tooth, and when the tooth has a problem, there is increased morbidity. Other than somebody who doesn't have any debilitating or medical issue with toothache. So uh, my work, Chukuneke Tao, our work, observed in an environment that females were more affected than the males to the ratio of 1 is to 1.6 male to female. Most research has shown that females are affected more. But other people, depending on the environment, shows that males are more affected. But for me, in our, in our own research, we found out that females were more affected. I don't know why, because females seem to take more of their health than the men. They will want to clean their mouth very, very well so that they look presentable when there, somebody wants to talk to them. So I don't know why we find our own research that it was so. Now, you look at this. This thing you are seeing here, This thing you are seeing here is somebody's neck. It's somebody's neck, and you see how necrotic, how decayed the tissue are. So, but like I said, the challenge is the making of a surgeon. We cannot throw them away. And you can see, this person, ordinarily, if you do not know what to do, this person would have gone, but we treated him. You see, after, look at doing the treatment, how the healing was going on. Then after 
treatment. You see, total healing. That is what we do. So, the prevalence of uh, management of chronic uh, cervical necrotizing facialities as a potentially fatal fulminating disease. It's a, it's, a, it's a killer, no doubt about it. So, it is not easy managing it. In our own research, we postulated that poverty, ignorance, superstitious belief, in addition to improper health seeking behavior and poorer health care hab habits, may be a chain reaction causing this disease. And if we uh, look at our health care, oral health care, all these things will be taken care of. Now, you can now see. So, I know that in abroad, in the Western world, you can never see this kind of thing. They would have died before coming to hospital. How can somebody come? And even looking at it, how will you on earth think that this patient will be treated and still survive? But you see, you see the reality now. This patient, when presented, he was almost gone during the treatment and after the treatment. Then, what other thing we can look at that causes most of this problem? Culture, habits, and norms. Oral health care does not just mean absence of dental diseases. There are other things that oral health care can, you know, uh, 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 are involved, like craniofacial anomalies, congenital anomalies. These are part of oral health. So, but the peculiar one is the one we can avoid. Use of tobacco in a different form. On the other hand, local habits such as the use of tobacco or um, what Agnes Wamma in different forms and some herbs to remedy oral lesion can contribute to increased rise in oral cancer. You see, these two cases are just me and you. They never at any point knew they can have this kind of problem. But the thing is that we do not take good care of our oral health. We feel that oral health doesn't really matter. You know, after all, so when my advice, because with this lecture, if you do not gain anything before leaving here, then it's as, it's as good as not coming at all. So what I want us to gain here is about our oral health care. Let us know that any lesion, any uh, ulcer or whatever in your mouth that stays more than two weeks without getting, you know, uh, 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 cured, without the thing resolving, query pre malignancy you have to go and see an oral surgeon as soon as possible. Because ordinarily, the oral cavity is well vascularized. So any lesion that doesn't have any cancerous effect would have healed with or without drugs for two weeks. And another thing to take home, any cancer in the oral cavity that has stayed more than 40 days undiagnosed, metastasis has started. That is why oral cancer is very difficult to manage. Uh, recently, I don't know if the lady is here. I don't know. She told me she'll be here. I treated an oral cancer patient that has cancer in situ. And she is totally cured. How, was, how did it occur? We did a session of that area with white uh, incision because it's cancer in situ. It hasn't spread. Then she went for radiotherapy and chemotherapy. And I can tell you, that is the first case I've ever seen somebody who had cancer got 100% cured. So you see, total abatement of the disease. Because it was early, we were able to get the thing early. And that is why when I talk, I advise government that we must have diagnostic center for early diagnosis of cancer and some other curable diseases that when they become, you know, uh, advanced, 
they become incurable. So, oral cancer over the world is a, it constitutes a very serious problem. And uh, it, it varies, varies from generation to generation, varies from locations, geographical locations. And that depends on the type of food, drinks, nuts that people eat. Like in India, the better nut they eat causes some of this problem. The, uh, in Nigeria, the use of tobacco causes problem. But what we find out from my research, Oji and Chukudeke, poor oral hygiene may be the sole cause of oral cancer. This was written in the Journal of Mesofacial and Oral Surgery. We find out that poor oral hygiene, when we did a case study in our environment, poor oral hygiene was, you know, significant, significantly connected to poor oral hygiene and cancer. It was a strong etiological factor. So, suffice to say that once we keep our oral environment okay, we are likely to avoid oral cancer. Now, you see the devastating effect of oral cancer. Just from a little ulcer, a little boil, and it has progressed to this level. Good. Now, away from cancer, let us go to our own uh, device, innovations, we use to treat some patients when we have handicapped with facilities and equipment. Uh, what I want to talk about here is tobacco patch tutor technique for the treatment of vascular lesions of the lip. Vascular lesions of the lips are hemangioma, which cause a lot of swelling of the lip. And any uh, provocation, it bleeds. Now, treating it is not easy, especially in our environment. We saw some of these patients. We didn't know what to do, but we have to think. If we cannot have the necessary equipment, resources to treat this, what can we do? How do we source local content with the knowledge we have? So, we felt that we cannot treat this case the way. So, what we did that, looking at so many methods, we therefore use an innovative but cheap, easy, efficient method of treatment that we have successfully used on our patient. And uh, you will see, we use the simple clinical findings for our diagnosis and, and treated our patient by applying the tobacco pouch suture technique to encircle the tumor. Because when the, the, the lesions are, you cannot cut it. You can only use laser, you can only use cryo surgery to, you know, remove the lesion without any problem. But if you have to ensure that it is cleared, well, there's a lot of things you do. So we do not want to take chances in our cases. So we use a combination of ligation and sclerosing agent to achieve complete success. Despite the absence of advanced imaging technique and limited option of treatment, we achieved total success and good cosmetic result. Well, this might not be conventional method, but it is what works in our environment. It is what works in our environment. What I usually say is that necessity is the mother of invention. When you are challenged, you become productive. If we were not able to do anything for this patient, this patient wouldn't have been treated. They don't have money to go to abroad. So we used our local innovation and treated our patient in the best way and achieved this result. This, this uh, case and more cases were published in the British Journal of Oral and Masofacial Surgery. So you can imagine when an international community accepts your publication of a new thing you develop, of a new method you develop, 
then it goes a long way to say we are doing great. And today, interestingly, many other con African countries that are faced with the same similar situation we have are copying them, copying what we did, and quoting us every now and then. You see, what I usually tell people is that we are exposed to surgery. Nobody comes down from heaven and becomes a surgeon. It's either you learn it, the act, you watch it being done, you read it, you practice it, and you think it out yourself. We read the one they, they thought out. What about we people thinking out our own, using our local initiative, local innovation, and treat our patient for us to copy also and read? So this was what we had to do. And um, other people are also copying us. Now we talk of amyloblastoma, presentation and treatment. I'm sure that when you are passing along the road most often, you see some of these patients with all these tumors. I've seen many of them. There's one, I won't call him name, because he's unethical. Maybe you must have been seeing him. I told him to come that I will treat you free. He collected my number. I called him severally. He said that, well, that this begging is helping him because he's using the begging to train some of the younger ones. So you can now see where our problem is. So ameloblastoma is a common jaw tumor. Most of the jaw tumors you see today are ameloblastoma. And it starts like a pimple. The funny thing is that most people that this ameloblastoma affect, because it is not malignant and it doesn't kill, but it will destroy the jaw. It can even stay up to 10 years, 15 years. You will see some of the cases I will show here that are stayed up to 15 years. So during the time you will treat it now, it becomes a problem. Surgical outcome becomes very problematic, but if they come early enough, it's as, as, as simple as that. So some of them, when they have it, they will think that it is as a result of a vengeance from an offended God for the transgression they committed now or in the past of their life. So they will now go to a native doctor that will go and do a effort to find out um, uh, which cow or goat or whatever they will kill to appease the God. So that is the thing. It's not a malignant legion, but it can cause a lot of havoc. Now, these are just a few cases of ameloblastoma. This is something that can be avoided something that can be treated. I'm going to show you the one that occurred in 12 years old here, how it was treated with no problem, everything. So when patient is present in this way, it becomes very, very problematic to handle. That, that, that is the thing. Now, surgical resection or enucleation remains the most effective, definitive treatment for ameloblastoma. Becuritage and liquid nitrogen have been used in some cases. So, like this young little girl, this lesion occurs, I might say earlier, not because that was three years. It's a duration of three years before the parents brought her. And before then, they had al al already gone to, you know, uh, spiritual houses and all this and that. But because the they are living near um, one of the federal medical centers. They went in there. The doctor said they are going to operate. Eventually, they came to us. And um, we had to. In certain cases, you remove the jaw of the individual. But for us, we try as much as possible to conserve the jaw bone in such a way that the patient will eventually Quality of life, because when you call somebody's jaw, how will the person live? I've seen many times we did those surgical removal, and depression kills the patient. So that is the thing. So while ameloblastoma is not a cancer, they, they actually invade adjacent tissues. Ameloblastoma is very invasive and spreads to adjacent areas of jawbone. 
via Maru Space. In advanced cases, like I said, it's very, very difficult to manage. Oji et al. did a lot of work in resection of the musculature of the floor of the mouth to which the tongue is attached and totally detach the jaw from the mandible. And when these things are done, are done the tongue might fall back and the patient might suffocate. Then um, we devise a means for which to protect the tongue from falling back. Normally, there has been some crude way of doing that. But just like I was saying, there's always a need to be innovative, to bring out something that we create a new opportunity, a new idea that we improve your patient care. So, aesthetics are very, very important in management of ameloblastoma. Once the ameloblastoma has become so large, treating it becomes a problem. So, what we do, we devise a method, the OJ spatula. You know, when we started operating, if you look at this picture, by the left side of the patient with the mouth open, that is how, after removing the jaw for a large ameloblastoma, after removing the jaw for the large ameloblastoma, because the tongue is, not, is no longer being held by any muscle, it can fall back. So what you do, you tie a suture and tie, bring out the tongue and tie it to the chest. That is very crude way. So after some surgery, when I did with uh, Professor Chimaji, Professor Oji, you are here. I hope you stand up so that they will see you. Because I didn't know when you entered. So, after the surgery, I told him, my chief, this thing that appears very crude. How can we allow this patient to be like this? That is not good at all. So, we then said, that, say, what do we do? I said, okay, let us bring a a spatula now, since our main problem is that the tongue will fall back. So if we tie the spatula to the tongue, when the, the, the tongue wants to move back, the spatula will be protected from the oral commissure. Therefore, the, the tongue will not fall back. That is what we did. And that is how the spatula came about. And people have been quoting us till today. So normally, when you reconstruct the mandible, because after removing the mandible, you can't leave it like that. There will be drooling of blood, I mean, of, uh, 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 drooling of uh, saliva, and the aesthetics will be so compromised, the patient's face will look like fish, at times like bird. Because when you remove the jaw, what else is remaining? Not only compromising feeding, also the aesthetics. So what is life? In fact, there was one man we operated on one day. After the surgery, he came back. We did another operation. The third time, we then asked him, well, what do you want to say? How do we go? You know what the man said? He said, well, what do you people want me to say? I am a finished man. <laughs> so go ahead and do whatever you want to do. You see, of course, I told my chief, I said, well, I think the man is very correct. Let us face the truth. So if we can avoid a situation like this, it will be, you know, it will help an individual. Now, if you look at this, you see the long span, the, the, the long span of, um, of the, the process is used. The jaw has been cut. If you look at the right, you see the, the, the jaw that was totally removed. And you see, no matter the remnant of the jaw bone that remains, and you put reconstruction plate there, it can never serve the normal uh, jaw bone. No way. It can never. So, prosthesis is prosthesis. And after some time, it tends to ulcerate. And you now have to remove the jaw. And even it can turn to malignancy. So, 
that is some of the challenges we often have. Now, treatment of mesofacial fractures with local anesthesia. Ordinarily, when there is fracture, whether favorable or unfavorable fracture, the main thing to do is to treat the case under general anesthesia. Because under general anesthesia, you'll be able to manipulate yourself. The patient will not disturb you, not the one you'll be working. The patient will be biting your hand. Because under local anesthesia, you might not achieve everything. But in our environment, the cost of general anesthesia is very expensive. And also, mortality. Mortality do occur for something that you can just fix and the patient will go. So most often, we resort to using local anesthesia, especially when there is no uh, extensive destruction of, of the tissue or highly displaced fracture. You can do it, mobilize it under local anesthesia. So if you look at this case, that was me walking, putting eyelet wires and arch bar to immobilize and fix the jaw. The patient had fracture. And thereafter, it was okay. Then if you look at, if you look at the middle here, if you look at, if you look at here, I don't know if it's in there. Okay. If you look at the middle, you see that uh, there is bone plates here. This kind of fracture, this kind of fracture, there is no way you can do this under local anesthesia. Except you want the person to bite your hand off. Because there will be severe pains. So, such a case, you have no alternative. It must be done under local anesthesia, I mean under general anesthesia. But for this one at the right, this was done under local anesthesia. Like I said, it's not always the right thing to do, but it's the right thing to save life. Because when the fracture has healed or infection ends there, life will end. What is the point of taking somebody to theater and he looks like Bianca and you bring the person out dead? It doesn't have any usefulness. Yeah? It's, it's, a, it's a living lion, not, I mean living dog, not better than dead lion. So these are the, some of the challenges you will face as a surgeon. Taking decisions that will affect your patient. You look at patient outcome. Now, reconstructive surgery in a violent society. Gunshot injuries have been on the rise globally and in Nigeria. It's not an exempted. It's not exempted. The degree of damage of orofacial region depends on the type of weapon used, the distance between the discharge bullet and the targeted site. They have shotgun high-velocity missile and low-velocity missile. The low-velocity missiles are those ones that come with a cartridge. So they are not so destructive like the high-velocity missile. So, but each, not minding the, 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 the uh, mantra is, treat the wound and not the gun. So, and that is what we do. If you look at this, this is a gunshot injury when they came, there has been some primary healing, I mean, secondary healing, but the whole jaw was shattered. What I did is to reconstruct internally, put uh, iliac bone to replace the, the lost uh, 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 um, bone tissue, and then reconstruct the face. And this is the way it is. Under limited condition, in certain cases, you might be doing a, you might be doing a, um, Surgery never takes light. So, then here is the same thing. As a register, I was confronted with an extensive distortion of the mandible in a female patient who was shot by high velocity missile. This was as far back, about 20 something years ago. You can imagine. This was what we did. We combined our work with my, uh, plastic surgeon and we were able to come to this. But of course, some of these patients often die because of when they look at their face, they no longer appear the way they were before. 
So that has always been the problem. Now, ethics of managing no artificial end stage cancer in the press economy. Our oath is cost no harm. While individual doctors have their their own while individual doctors okay, while individual doctors have their own beliefs and values, there are certain professional values on which all doctors are expected to base their practice. Doctors have a duty to make their care, the care of their patient their first concern and to practice medicine safely and effectively. They must be ethical and trustworthy. Good professional judgment and conduct in clinical practice should be patient-centered. It involves doctors understanding that each patient at the end of his or her ailment is unique and working in partnership with their patient to address the needs and reasonable expectation of each patient while dying. The philosophical dictum as postulated by Plato and Aristotle emphasized the role of reason both in perceiving what is just and in allowing us to act justly rather than giving in to contrary impulses of our desires and emotions. Because when emotions are involved, logic argument has no place. In the same ethical maxim, the Hippocratic Oath has often been referred to as ethical foundation of medical practice with the key restriction, cause no harm. In medical profession, the oath exemplifies the key virtues of doctor in emphasis on the obligation towards the well-being of the individual patient, Chukuneke, 2015. This is the principle on which the professional conduct of physicians, surgeons, and surgeons is centered. Ethics is about duties and obligation. It's never a fixed rule. What are the obligations? As a clinician, our obligation is to ensure the well-being of our patient and not sacrificing one to make other people happy. Physician must protect the lives of their patient and should never have seen their death. Patients trust their doctors because they believe that in addition to being competent, their doctor will not take advantage of them and will display qualities such as integrity, truthfulness, dependability, and compassion. 2015. When we cannot cure an ailment, what we have to do is to release suffering, but never abandoning the patient. All these patients you see with all this lesion, we never abandon them. We did what we should do and make sure that they have peace of mind while dying naturally, because death is inevitable, whether anybody likes it or not. And we don't know what they are going to face us before we die. So that is the, one, the reason you have to take care of this patient to the last. Therefore, in the clinical management of end cancer, end stage cancers, decisions should be made between op optional and obligatory treatment. Extraordinary treatment can legitimately be forgotten, but not ordinary treatment. Extraordinary, I mean, in terms of maybe doing heroic surgery. What are you doing heroic surgery when the patient will die after all? Wasting money from the parents, wasting money from the relation, and also causing more injury to the patient. You can give a palliative care and allow the person, give the moral support and everything so that the patient can die naturally. Conclusion. Practicing oral and special surgery in the law environment could be very, very frustrating and challenging. This is a result of the multifactorial reasons already presented here. In the specialty of oral and masofacial surgery, it is often common to encounter several challenges, cases as a result of non-availability of facilities and limited option of treatment. In Nigeria, as is often the case with most developing countries, a vicious chain reaction of poverty, superstition, ignorance, poor health-seeking behaviors, and limited option of treatment result in patient default for late presentation. Poor health seeking behavior has always been an impediment to health care delivery, especially at the local level. Most people believe that diseases are caused by supernatural beings, the handwork of neighbors, or vengeance from an offended God as a result of transgression committed in the past by an individual or parent. Although people's understanding of health matters varies according to culture, religion, belief, norms, habit, Patients equally get frustrated when they cannot see doctors or get treatment when they present to the clinics. Then we have over time as surgeons practicing in low resource settings, devise some local innovations as presented here 
in the absence of conventional technique for our patients and achieved very good results that, often copy, that are often copied by some developing countries that find themselves in similar situations. Acknowledgement. <coughs> I am most grateful to Almighty God, the beginning and the end, the one who decides the fate of every mortal. I worship thee for making this day a reality. I remain grateful to God for bringing me this far. Today, is really, it really gladdens my heart, standing on the podium, delivering this inaugural lecture to a wide audience like this. Sadly, my dear daughter, Chisom Eninia, is not here. But I can imagine how joyous, how joy we be up there watching and listening to her lovely dad delivering his inaugural lecture while she celebrates her heavenly birthday. May she continue resting in the bosom of the Lord until we meet to part no more. To keep our dream alive, I have put in place a medical foundation known as Chison Chukuneke Medical Foundation to assist children with medical problems in need of help. <laughs> to this end, this is the logo. To this end, I have decided to put aside 5 million naira as a start of grant to the foundation. Yes, we have to do that. A foundation don't just start immediately and start getting money. You have to put money, establish it, and they will take it off from there. Her dream is what I will pursue. And by the special grace of God, we will do that with your help. Meanwhile, I thank Mr. Sandra Chukuma Esquire and Dr. Joma Radiwe for their commitment towards this project. My special thanks to Dr. Teresa Nwaya, Professor Nando Nyiri, Professor Anthony Kefuna. God bless you. These people were very, very helpful to me in those dark days. My appreciation and love go to my dear daughter, my lovely daughter. Very intelligent, very clever, smart, and a good girl. Chiamaka, okay, chuku chuku neke. Chiamaka, stand up, let them see you. Well, who by his special grace will become and soon be addressed as a barrister? You are such a wonderful daughter, and I'm very proud of you. <laughs> to my late dad, Nze, Ele Chuku Neke, Nwabula Koba, you are too late, we, uh, we forever, have, while our life has been of great impact. In what I do today, keep praising in the Lord. I'm, to my mother, Mrs. Christian, Christiana Chukuneke, may God keep keeping you for us. Yes, this is our sweet memories. They never fade. It's everlasting as long as you live. Sweet memories. To my dear sister, Mrs. Peshen Chukuneke, who is here or has she left? Thanks, uh, thank you for what you did for me. Yes. That's my dear sister. <laughs> thank you for what you did for me. I probably wouldn't have been here delivering this lecture today if not for your encouragement, support, and care during all the challenges of life beyond comprehension that I went through. May God protect and keep you for us. Mrs. Gloria Chukuneke, my sister, I say thank you also for your sister during my two days. Chief Chukunye Longonolo, you are all I had as an uncle. May God bless you wherever you are. Then my late, my late auntie, let Mrs. Jemima Adi Enwelu Animalo, me on one my auntie, the wife of my uncle, Professor Animalo, who is now late. I wish you are still alive today. You were so caring, cooking food and bringing to me all the way from Osaka to Enugu. Thank you so much, Auntie. The sweet memories still lingers on. My cousin, Sibilu, no sister, Mabel Lulu, no. Thank you for all your help and assistance during my university level. My special thanks go to the Lord Bishop, my Lord Bishop Ibaya, Emeritus Bishop of Nikedias, Anglican Communion. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you for your continuous assistance and support all the time. He has always been there for me and my family. And I cannot thank you more than enough, my Lord. I also thank Venerable Professor F.U. Ezepo and Venerable Dr. Ibaya for all their support during those dark days. My thanks goes to my brother, Donai Milas, Itegoba. Where is Itegoba? Yes, Donai Milas. And my cousin, Dr. Ben Emone, most national. Mr. Anes Ibeto, Barrister Edimba. My in law, Sonfe Okonkwo, Mr. Fan Yan Yisobi. Special thanks to my very good friend and academic giant, and a great thinker, a good writer, and a man who is of many colors. One day, the number. No other person than Dr. Tony A. Ochoma. Dr. Ochoma, where are you? Thank you for all the support for this inaugural lecture. I want to thank my alumni from Mokbunumogali Primary School. Um, you might surprise you that as in Ife in Oba, you know, Anonia Bioba, Oba Balia. Yes, one of them, I don't know if he's here, he promised me he'll be here. I don't know why he didn't come here. He was actually my junior in primary school. And the mother taught me in my primary school, no other person than doctor, a professor. Obinna Onodugo, the CMD of UNTH. He was my junior, so he was my small boy. <laughs> Where is he? Um, then some other of them, very successful, Dr. Benjamin Moise, working um, a, a, a physician in North Carolina, Mr. Ifan Yemendu, and Mr. Abino Keshiku. These are very successful businessmen of Bangwelum Madu. May I also appreciate my cousin, Ugo Chukwaba, Chief Prince Yemeko Biafuna, Newsbreak West Africa, Newsbreak International, Newsbreak Nigeria. Name it. Ugo Chukwaba. Dalo. My appreciation also to my secondary school mates, I've mentioned in the architect, Pito Koye, Olatubo Sajai, His Excellency Ambassador. I made the Tunji Gambari, who by a lot of this, he couldn't make it today, uh, this time, you know. So, you know, a lot of uh, people in all this police, a lot of things can come up and then they will have to, ah, yes. <laughs> yes. We will make it greatest. That's government secondary school, eh, Lauren. Ola Tumbo Sajai. You are welcome, my brother. <laughs> so, my special thanks goes to my alumni. I don't know if the former chief of uh, staff to the former government, Dr. Fesu Suzo, is here. He promised me he'll be here. If you are here, rise, raise up your hand and people will see you. Otherwise, uh, you promise me you'll be here. Then... Um, Joy, Joy Manta. Some of them, Dr. Chuku Jomile, Dennis Abazue, Abraham Chuku, Keche Bechi, name them. Um, Ezea Maka Zenkele, Ezea Maka, you have to stand up. Ken Wankwa, stand up, let them see you. you uh, we started it together. Eh? So stand up, let them see you people. Where is Mike Wankwa? These, these are our people. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Then, Professor Mora, you don't need to hide. I said, I don't know if you know if you are talking. Where is Professor Mora? You stand up here. Yes, stand up. Let them see you. Not raising your hand. <laughs> yes. We started all together. Onyo Makaira, did you? So, <clears throat> I also want to thank my, my faculty members. Thank you for all you've been. Professor Ndupe. Uh, Lindo Koye is here. Uh, my associate Dean Waila. Um, Dr. Mark Mwaga, Akaji. All of you, you have always been there for me. Being a dean is not a one man show. Ofonya da zomwa. No, you go be here. Gidi gidi bugweze. 
So I uh, thank you, people, for all you you do. Then many thanks to my good friends, Dan Wachuku, DBC, or Fokansi, who all the same, despite the challenges he had, he was able to come here. Because, well, he knows he cannot give me reason why he should not be here. Because we started this uh, together. So thank you for finally coming on board. So we need to represent the traditional job for Kakuru. Yes, I know. So. Um, I said, I found Zebioku. The traditional ruler of Oba, Eben Sibia, yeah. Obezo Boko, being represented by no other person than Ichie Igulubo Oba, Chief Yiyewu, Ekedengu, Chief Obi, Ekedengu, you are welcome, sir. Igulube, Igulube Oba, I agree to you. Um, as you see, when we were starting, there are people who dress in the regalia, traditional African regalia, which are Igbos are known for, walking majestically. There are no other people than Ozondi Igbo, Nigeria, being led by a professor, um, Oluka, Iko Oluka, Iko Oha, and his, his team. You are welcome. I'm also a traditional person. So now, so you are welcome. You are welcome. Then I will not fail to thank the people of um, um, Amandimolo. Because I, I thought I saw them here. The Igwe who gave me the title, Lebe Kwedi Kenolo, sent his presentatives. So, oh, if I go, I said, I'm going to number there, you know, I'm going to So, thank you very much for coming to stay with me to show them, yes, Lebe Kwedi Kenbo, not for free. Lebe Kwedi Kenbo, na Ezoro Mezo Wewetia. No, if I'm going to say, I'm going so I can be proud. Don't go there, you go. I'm not serious. You never go to the camp. So that I don't know. That I don't know. So if you look at this, these are some of uh, sweet memories. I carried in some politics, Washington D.C. with the then uh, late Professor Preglino. Thank you, my faculty members, for all the things you did for me, and those ones who really helped us when we were in Benin. Professor Akpata, Professor Ojo, Professor Olaito, uh, Ajike, all of them. Thank you for all you did. I will not, I will not fail to appreciate the good work of the late professors, Aloy Ayaj. Professor Ayaj Aloy was very, very, very instrumental to me becoming a professor. I wish he is alive today to be here to listen to me. I cannot really say what this man did for me, but wherever he is, may God keep him, let him rest in the Lord. Same with Professor Wilson Onibo. These are the people who were encouraging to me. They made me to write. They made me to do research. They helped me where necessary. May God bless them. You see, it's inevitable that death will come. And once it comes, there's nothing we can do. Thank you. So, So, I thank them very, very well for what they've done for me in my life. Words alone cannot, you know, express my gratitude to some of the doctors at Ved Donagodon Hospital, South Africa, Johannesburg, Parktown, Johannesburg. Those people were very wonderful people. Specifically, Miss Rona Peter, she was very exceptional person, very exceptional human being. I can't thank her more than enough. At the turbulent period in South Africa, this lady stood by me until dead. She has always been there for me. God bless you richly. Then Dr. K. Bennett, Dr. Sheba Vagis, and Ms. Jem, and these were God-sent angels in human form. You see, 
Aristotle said that if you are good, you are good. You cannot change. Excellence is not by art, but by habit. One becomes perfect by repeatedly doing something over time. Good people are always there. They will always be there. Whether they are from east or west, they will always manifest the goodness in them. This lady was a very wonderful lady. My daughter, wherever she is, will not forget this lady in a hurry. Finally, I cannot forget my bioethics family, Serati, whose scholarship for master health research ethics provided my incursion into medical ethics that projected me to the international community. Special mention here includes Carol, Dr. Wesner, Mariana Kruger, Nlanla Nkize, Teresa Rosso, Schoolman, others are Mr. Joyce Jakavula, Kala Potit, all the universities of Pretoria and KwaZulu Natal, those in John Hopkins, African Biotics Training, Professor Nancy Kars, Dr. Hadad Nan, Joy Ali, my other classmate, Nancy Soko, Zambia, Lumuli in Bonile from Tanzania, Bochimelo Mopalaya from uh, Botswana, and uh, Professor Oyuje Umora. This is African British scholars when we went to Hopkins University. Being challenged in life is inevitable. Being defeated is optional. I appreciate my alma mater, UNN, for the opportunities it had offered me from my undergraduate days as a student, despite all challenges, until my position as a professor and dean, despite all the challenges in life. To my everlasting father, I give all praises. Thank you. Life is short. Smile while you still have teeth. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Please stand. Let's give him a, a, a standing ovation. That's the 186th inaugural lecture of the University of Nigeria. Please, please sit down. Thank you so very much. Um, you would agree with me that that was an emotional one. Um, and I guess there are other things to say. Um, Professor Animal, are you leaving? Um, please sit down. Um, my pleasure to invite the chairman, the deputy vice chancellor Enugu campus um, to make some presentations on behalf of the university to the inaugural lecturer and thereafter um, give his post lecture comments. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I told you that this lecture was going to be interesting, even though some part of it were highly emotional. What an interesting lecture from Professor Chukuneke the first inaugural lecturer from the Faculty of Dentistry. Please, can we give him a resounding applause? It's, we have seen the lecture, the challenges they are facing in our own environment in the practice of oral and maxillofacial surgery. And in the course of their practice, they have developed certain techniques, test, certain um, measures in order to help solve patient needs and problems. And some of these techniques are widely used today. Can we give them a clap, please? You know, the challenges we are facing today in our country, especially in area of healthcare, poor funding, poor equipment, but they say necessity is the mother of um, invention. And that's exactly what uh, Professor Chukuneke and his team has demonstra have demonstrated. So I want to 
on behalf of the vice chancellor please i want to on behalf of the vice chancellor present this certificate of presentation which reads University of Nigeria, be it known that Professor Felix Nzube Chukuneke of the Department of Dentistry delivered the 186th inaugural lecture of the University of Nigeria entitled Oral and Maxillofacial Surgical Practice in a Developing Economy, the Making of a Surgeon. On the 24th day, 2023. Congratulations. There is also a plaque presented to you by the university. Now, the university has also presented 50 copies of your lecture for you to give to your friends and family members. So we want to congratulate you for giving us a wonderful lecture. Thank you. Um, chairman. Um, I understand um, about two groups would want to make presentations on a day like this to the inaugural lecturer and the chairman has directed that I allow them two minutes each and so the first group to make a presentation would be um, the students of dentistry students of the faculty of dentistry I understand you want to make a a presentation to your dean who has just presented the 186th inaugural lecture. Um, it looks like they're not ready. Um, um, the other group, they, are you ready? Please come. Um, Davis, take, take the microphone today. Okay. Standing on the already existing protocol, on behalf of um, the members of African Dental Students Association, and the Board of Trustees of African Dental Students Association as led by Professor Gatecha, we present this gift to Professor Chukuneke, the 186th inaugural lecturer of University of Nigeria, who is a member of Board of Trustees of African Dental Students Association. Thank you very much. That's it. Um, the last presentation will be made by the class of 1984 Government Secondary School 
a Lauren Quara State, the class of 84. Davis? On behalf of the 84th set of Government Secondary School, Ilori, we make this presentation to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So you open it. Open it. Cut, cut, cut. Thank you so very much. Thank you. That's it with the presentations. Um, can I make the following announcements, please? Um, the next inaugural lecture, the 187th inaugural lecture of the University of Nigeria, will be presented by Professor Ifoma Joy Okoye. An applause for her. Okay, Madam, you are in the house. And that will hold exactly one week from today, on Thursday, August the 31st, 2023 right here at the mute court and the topic is wait for it uh, dream it see it do it dream it see it and do it and so in exactly one week from today we'll be right here at the mute court for the 187th inaugural lecture of the university of nigeria please be in attendance And next, the 186th inaugural lecturer, uh, Professor Felix Chukuneke, um, and his committee of friends, they've asked that I make um, this announcement um, about the different venues for lunch, for refreshment. And so, starting with um, the students, the great lions and lionesses will be served lunch here, right here at the mute court. So you've been requested to stay back at the end of it all so that you can be served lunch here. Um, the vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellor, the principal officers of the university here present, including the past inaugural lecturers, will be served lunch at the office of the deputy vice chancellor, the DVC's office. You know where that is. So right after this, please proceed and get served lunch. Um, all professors from UNEC, um, College of Medicine, Doctors from UNTH, all academic staff from UNEC, invited friends of the lecturer, staff of the NTA, and other very senior administrative staff of University of Nigeria Enugu campus and the College of Medicine will be served lunch at the main hall, the main hall of the university. Again, you know where that is. And then the traditional rulers, all titled invited guests, have been requested to proceed to the residence of Professor Chukuneke and old boys of um, Mosbida School in Kwara State, his old boys and members of his family who have come from out of town have also been requested to proceed to his residence here at UNEC where he'll be served lunch. Other staff of UNEC are invited and invited guests have also been asked to proceed to the tent that has been set up in front of the main hall where you will be served lunch. There's a tent that's been set up at the right in front of the main hall of the University of Nigeria Nogo campus. And that's it. Um, and the tricky bit, the, the vote of thanks. Uh, Give me his name again. Get me his name again. Yeah, so um, we've come to that part where we thank everybody who has made this 
um, what has turned out to be a very, very happy day in the life of this emotional lecturer, Professor Chukuneke. Um, I remember when we started thinking about the possibility of having this lecture on a day like this, he um, had particularly requested and wished that he would give his lecture on this date. And we thank goodness that it has happened. And so on behalf of the Senate Ceremonials Committee, it's my pleasure to thank everyone who has played a role. I'll start always with the Vice Chancellor, who has generously been funding the activities of the Senate Ceremonials Committee. Then the, the, the Deputy Vice Chancellor in Ugo Campus, who gives this priority. It's on record that he hasn't missed any inaugural lecture. Please, an applause for him. An applause for the chairman. He hasn't missed any inaugural lecture, and, and in his absence, the inaugural lecture wouldn't be what it is. So thank you, um, DVC, for always um, being here to chair the lectures. And all the ladies and gentlemen who have made this place uh, full of energy, past inaugural lecturers, um, emeritus professors, and uh, members of the governing council, um, please thank you so very much. The provost, the deans who are in the house, thank you for coming um, in. And um, his colleagues from the College of Medicine, from the Faculty of Dentistry, uh, members of his LOC, um, the local or the Committee of Friends, who have done the extra, extra bit to bring the energy in the hall. Um, you deserve a recognition. And then the distinguished guests, the Igwe's members of the, all the traditional institutions, um, the clergy, his classmates, the members of his family who have come from outside the University of Nigeria today um, to, to make him have a memorable day. Um, we're, we're so, so thankful. Um, I am also thankful to the technical crew. I, Delighted that they, this guy is always here. I didn't receive any complaints today about the Zoom connectivity. That means you've got 10 out of 10. Thank you so very much. Music department, I was surprised to see you, but it looks like you guys, you've got your independence. You, you choose when to come and when not to come, but it's, 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 it's all good. So are you going to be here next week, music department? Okay. <laughs> It'd be nice to see you next week if you're going to be here. And then the great lions and lionesses, you guys have been on your feet all day. Um, you've done an, an incredible job. And the ushers, I like your uniform. You, you know, you guys should think about making one for the chairman. And I like that uniform. Um, I did make a request that the ushers should be allowed to sit down. They were willing to stand all day, and I thought that wasn't necessary. Um, I, th I thought that the ushers should sit down. This is a lecture and nothing more. We've had, we've had occasions when somebody slumped while standing. It's for that reason that I requested that the ushers should sit down. And I'm grateful that the, um, the organizing committee obliged and asked them to sit down. And so thank you so very much, everyone who is here today. Um, with the chairman's permission, um, we've come to the end. May I request um, the bishop in the house? Um, I, I saw the bishop on the screen. Oh, oh uh, my Lord Bishop, um, it, would be, it would be a great pleasure if you would uh, say the closing prayer and bless us, sir. Thank you very much. Shall we bow our heads in prayer, please? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us in this time of reflection. We thank you in particular for University of Nigeria and Suka for the good work you are using your children to do. In any way there's any shortfall, Lord, build them up in Jesus' name. Thank you for the young man, your son, who delivered the lect inaugural lecture today. My Lord and my God, replenish him and continue to strengthen him draw him closer and closer to you. And for all of us, as we go, the Lord will go with us. The enemy will not overtake you. You will arrive home safely. And the joy of the Lord will be your portion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, sir. Uh, that, that prayer about safe journey must have been tailored for those of us that came from Unsuka. And so we claim it. Um, but we take the second stanza of the national anthem and right after um, the VC will leave. Please stay standing. 
um, the, the national anthem, please. Thank you. table recess the hall on behalf of the school management I want to say thank you all for making today's events colorful we appreciate you all and we wish you journey mercy back to your various destinations God bless you all for coming thank you this is my song praising my Savior all of the Lord. This is my story. This is my song. Our oh, praise my Savior. All of the Lord. This is my story. This is my song. Praise my Savior. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. 